Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto, and bringing out a bite-sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, I'm feeling pretty bullish, and it really comes down to two different charts. So we're going to take a look at those two charts, and we're also going to go over an old adage, which is uh, sell in May and go away. And I'm going to add this in as far as September. Also, we're going to take a look at uh, the exchange reserves. Uh, don't sleep on Cardano as they have a uh, an upcoming event that's going to be pretty big, uh, which will have it happen in the last two or three days. And then lastly, we'll take a look at unstoppable domains and the uh, Pi Cycle Top chart. So first of all, hey, it's a pretty good day. Uh, it is a Wednesday, beautiful day out here. And uh, I can just tell you right now that as far as like the turnaround, it's been pretty dramatic. We're almost hitting two trillion. We're up four percent. Not that it's like huge type of thing, but. Uh, I mean, I'll take any good news today. So 1.94 trillion market cap breaking on, hopefully that 2 trillion. Bitcoin price is 43.2. And then uh, across the board, everything's up. So if you happen to uh, take uh, advice from some people uh, around you and bought the dip, congratulations, uh, you're a winner for today. So again, Bitcoin 43.2, Ethereum above 3,000, barely 3,021. Cardano is holding at 220. Uh, Tether's Tether only cares, 372 for Binance coin, and so on and so forth. So it's looking pretty good so far. Also, we're using Trade the Chain for sentiment analysis. And then for the projected range for the next things, if you're a big trader, take a look at uh, DIA, Arm, Arweave. I've been hearing a lot of great news about that one. Quant, Troy, <laughs> Voyager Token, number five. Crazy. So, anyhow, that's what's going on in the market. Let's just break into uh, what I say is like today's top story. So, today there's an old adage. And it comes down and talks about, it says, uh, sell in May and go away. And what that means is in the traditional markets, nothing really happens too much in uh, uh, June, July, August. And then everything kind of hits us around, you know, after September in, in, in Q4. And that is kind of holding true right now for this year. And uh, there was this chart uh, that I was uh, privy to. I think I saw it on George's channel first. And it was pretty interesting as far as like what is going on. Let me move this up just a little bit so we can all see it. Ah, right, there we are. And uh, what we're looking at right here is the Bitcoin monthly returns. And the thing that I really want you to notice right now is, well, September, essentially. And if we can take a look at September, it doesn't look that great. I mean, we're looking at, uh, if you're looking at the last eight years, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, excuse me, nine years, uh, you see that September is a pretty awful month, just like what everybody's been talking about for the longest of times. Only two years. Uh, this was in, uh, what is this, 2014, 2015, was it positive? But then I want you to notice something else. October, November, and even December. See how great October is? It's only had two down months in the last nine years as far as the Bitcoin price. Then November, even better, uh, pretty darn good. And there's these are like stellar returns, 449%. Uh, back in the day, 12%, 53%, 42%. Now, again, um, past performance does not indicate what could potentially happen in, in the present or the future. So just take that with a grain of salt. But in all honesty, I've always felt that uh, things could really happen in, uh, in, in Q4. However, I'd like you to take a note. I want to bring you back over here. And this is, I want you to take a look at January, February, and not really March. March is kind of a bad month. It's mostly mostly red, but you see January. Uh, usually, January is not a great uh, month traditionally for Bitcoin. I mean, there's a lot of talk about uh, elongated cycles. So if we say, okay, well, January might not be great, so maybe we we do some bumps and and uh, and uh, bruises and whatnot. Maybe in February, and in February again, only two down months, and then March, uh, maybe not. Who knows? But again, I think that just looking at this and in, in the uh, in the past looks pretty darn good, which leads me to my next point. So that is the first chart that has been pretty bullish. This is my next one. This is from Crypto, Crypto Quant. I thought I found it quite interesting about what they're doing as far as on-chain data analysis. And if you take a look at this, it's kind of confusing. I mean, not really, but uh, you got Bitcoin, uh, all exchange reserves, meaning all the Bitcoin that is being held by the exchanges so they can sell it, right? And then uh, that is in this blue line. Then underneath here in the gray line, uh, that is the price in US dollars for Bitcoin itself. See how there's like big diversions here between here and the price. And then all of a sudden as, as the exchange reserves drop, meaning people buy it up or they move it off the exchanges, that means that there is, uh, there's still the same demand or even more so, but there's not enough supply. And then all of a sudden people are like, what happened to all the Bitcoin? And then before you know it, everything goes sideways, price goes up and it converges back again. 
and then down we go. And take a look at this. I just made this uh, little graph to make it quite simple, which is again, just on the left-hand side, really what's happening is here is accumulation. Uh, people are either buying, taking it off, or just taking it off, but they're accumulating, they're putting in cold storage, they were taking it off the exchanges. So what does that do? Price increase, there's a lot of sell pressure. And then I want you to notice right here on the far right-hand side, because you can see what happened here, divergence, right? We got a lot of accumulation, price uh, kind of starts to go up. Then it kind of goes sideways, there's a little bit of action here and whatnot. And then what, what's happening again over here? We're doing the exact same thing. Well, we are accumulating, the price is going down, but guess what happens after this big accumulation happens? Big, huge price spike. So that as is uh, the data on-chain analysis as of 20 uh, of September, 2021. So I'm thinking it's pretty good. And that's not the crazy part. The crazy part is if we even go forward and we take a look at what is going on with Ethereum, take a look at that. That's insane. So again, all the exchange reserve as far as Ethereum, look where things are going. Just down and down, down. Now news has something to do with it, but uh, if you're looking for some fireworks, uh, again, I think there's uh, some pretty good days ahead of us. Can't tell you exactly when because I'm not Nostradamus or have a crystal ball, but I think uh, for me, I can't tell you what to do. It's just financial opinion, not financial advice. I'm just going to stick around and watch some fireworks in a, a month or so. And uh, that's what we have in that section. And then lastly, I want to sort of bring up uh, one little piece here, which is called uh, the uh, Pi Cycle Top. And um, what this is, is uh, it's something I've talked about before, and I haven't really uh, give it much attention as much as I should, but I'd like you to start tracking it about what's going on. So what is this? Well, first of all, uh, this is a pretty good indicator. The Pi cycle top indicator has historically been effective in picking up the timing of market cycle highs to within three days. It's pretty good. Pi cycle top is used to indicate uh, when the market is very overheated, so overheated that the shorter term moving average, which is the 111 day moving average, which uh, not too many people talk about, has reached a uh, times two or X2 multiple of the 350 day moving average. Historically, it has proved advantageous to sell Bitcoin at this time in Bitcoin's price cycle. So again, let's take a look at just uh, how accurate it is and how many times it actually uh, has been uh, actually gone as far as uh, the data itself. So if we take a look over here. So again, the um, doo -doo 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 down here, the 111-day uh, moving average is this in orange right here. And then the price of the 350-day moving average is in green right here. So when these cross, when this crosses over, orange over to green, that's when everything is overheated. So how many times has this happened? Well, uh, here's the price in uh, dark blue navy blue what do you want to call it this is in 2013 okay and this is when it actually crossed over and guess what happened boom went down and it just dropped like a rock and then nothing not too much happened maybe you want to kill a little more and then over here look what happened it hit a top and it crossed over and then it started to just wane and go all the way down let's move over that's only two times and uh it's only in 2013 as a matter of fact so here is the third time the third time this happened it happened on, oh, look at that. That is ah, right around 18th December, 2017. And here's the price up here, 18,000, oh, 19,000. Pretty much the top of Bitcoin in 2017. That's pretty good. And then it hasn't happened again until right around here, which was 15th of April or so. Uh, when Bitcoin hit 63,215 and it crossed over and here it is. And now we're back over here. So if you're looking for some kind of indicators, uh, I just gave you three and maybe this one you might want to uh, take a look at a little bit more closely. Again, not financial advice, just financial opinion. And that is what is going on with Bitcoin and why I'm feeling pretty bullish right now as far as with what is going on uh, in this space. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And let's uh, finish up with a couple of things of let's not sleep on Cardano, shall we? So um, news moves the markets sometimes, not all the time, but there's a, a pretty good uh, information of a, a summit coming out as far as the Cardano summit 2021. And it happens on 25th to 26th of, of September. I'm not sure if this is gonna be a catalyst for price action, but if there are some pretty big announcements uh, in this summit, then uh, it will be a, a major mover for Cardano. Maybe there's 
a cooperation between a couple of countries in Cardano, or maybe there's some big, huge announcements with smart contracts. I'm not saying there is. I'm just saying, but if they do make these announcements, uh, this would be the summit to watch out for because Cardano uh, has been a pretty big mover uh, year to date. And uh, what we've got here, as far as like what is going on itself, uh, you take a look. At, uh, it's crazy. It's like it's it's a it's an in person and a virtual. They got uh, seven virtual worlds to explore. Avatars let you talk to community members from around the world. That's pretty crazy. Uh, exclusive videos from keynotes to major news announcements, updates and interviews on community showcases, limited edition NFTs to collect. And yes, NFTs are already live on uh, Cardano. The summit is for two days. Contact the content is in eight hour blocks and it's repeated three times in a single day. So different time zones can experience all the news. So that's pretty good for everybody in Europe and uh, Australia and the Asian countries. Uh, so go right there. And then uh, again, seven worlds to explore, free to talk. And this is already sold out. But if you want to uh, uh, attend virtually, you can't go there in person. I mean, you can, but you got to do is you got to jump through some hoops. Uh, just go to uh, summit.cardano.org. Put your full name and email and they'll give you a link and you can watch all the stuff that's there and even the uh, I think the replays as well. So I will link that in the description. You can check that out. And that is what is going on as far as like uh, uh, with Cardano. Don't sleep on it. Oh, and also there's one more thing I want to talk about, which was um, GitHub. So I know people give uh, Cardano a bad rap because like no one's building on it. There's not really much going on. Well, there's this thing called proof of GitHub which uh, it just kind of just gives you an update about how much activity is going on. Not that this is like the end all be all uh, type of information about like, oh, they're doing a stuff. It's just the amount of work that's being done. And I would assume they're doing a ton of work right now because the summit is coming up. But if you take a look at this, it's uh, you know, like, hey, as far as like all the projects, GitHub de development activity, uh, you got uh, Cardano's number one, Kusama, Polkadot, uh, Gnosis, Status, Ethereum number six, Solana number seven, Chainlink number eight, and uh, ooh, the, the new uh, new darling of the block, Cosmos. So um, there is some activity going on. Smart contracts are happening. And then, of course, if you're uh, Mike Novogratz, nobody he knows works on Cardano. All right, so sure, whatever. And then also, <laughs> my friend James goes, maybe you should tag Charles. I'm like, uh, James, out of best answers, I think Charles already knows what's going on. So that is what is happening uh, as far as like uh, for Cardano. And uh, I think uh, there's better things ahead. So let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And lastly, just want to finish up with um, uh, Unstoppable Domains. So if you don't know, Unstoppable Domains is where you can register uh, your non-fungible token, your NFT uh, site, or you can actually purchase um, your site, your name, your whatever else. And, and to me, there's two things. Like I purchased my name, uh, dot, uh, crypto. And then I also put uh, Dan teaches dot crypto. And then I've also registered some other, uh, premium ones like with stem cell therapy and things like that. Uh, dot, I think it was, uh, dot coin. No, it was dot crypto as well. So there's that part of it. And also, uh, I think it's like one of the best things to do as far as like in the future to future proof yourself, uh, because, you know, as time goes on, this is, I'll just show you the graphic itself. This is what I think is going to happen. Uh, when you have like a crypto address, and so instead of like going, hey, what's your address so I can send you some Bitcoin? Oh, it's zero, whatever. You can just say, hey, it's uh, rob.smith. And then uh, they can just send it to you. And that's that's essentially your, your crypto address. So there is that part. And also their big announcement is this, is that um, Trust Wallet is the first wall to fully integrate all 10 of our domain endings. Cause you can get a, a domain of .crypto, .zil, .coin, .wallet, blah, 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 everything around there. And the big knock on this is that like, I would like to build a website. Unfortunately with unstoppable domains for these NFTs, um, I can do this. And if you are using a Brave browser, you can go right to my website, right? Dan teaches .crypto. If you have use an Opera, you can go right to my website. But if you're using Chrome, Firefox or Edge, I guess that's Microsoft's thing. I don't even know what that is. Um, then you can use, yeah, I know it's Microsoft, sorry. Uh, you can use your NFT and you can build your website. But for these right here, these three, you have to have a extension. Uh, so you have to download this thing from Chrome and Firefox and work it, which kind of sucks. So um, uh, there's some big things around the corner and I'm not privy to all the information, but uh, I know that there's a bunch of big 
announcements coming up. That's all I really know. So uh, it might behoove you to take a look and maybe get uh, your name or something like that uh, to purchase as far as an NFT types of things. And also remember, there's no renewal fees. It's like a one and done type of thing. Uh, unlike me, where I have to pay my domain every damn year, but whatever. And that's what's going on. So look, uh, links in the description if you want to use that uh, for unstoppable domains goes to the right place and all that good stuff. But uh, that is it for today. So look, if you uh, stuck with me all the way to the end, I first want to say thanks so much. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like this type of this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. Also consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive and that'll do it. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.